Mobility for Jiu Jitsu. Okay, now, a lot of the time, when I'm trying to teach people the guard and different movements within the guard, the big hurdle is their dexterity. Not as much flexibility, but dexterity. And if you have a good awareness of how to move your body and, and how the, the joints all work together, places where it's strong and places where it's weak, it's much easier to learn jujitsu. And if you already know jujitsu, you will become far more competent after understanding these things. First thing we're gonna look at is a hip circle and get up. So we start in something called a shin box. Okay, so I'm gonna be like this. How I'm sitting in this shin box, I wanna be as straight as possible. I want my shoulders as parallel to the ground as possible. I want my hips as parallel to the ground as possible. This is what you're gonna wanna do. It's going to feel like you need to do this. Some of you might even have to put a hand down. And that's because this hip is too tight. Well, this is why we're doing this, is to make sure that everything is, is able to move in the ranges that it needs to move in in order to do some of these more complicated movements in jiu-jitsu. I'm pulling up, okay, using whatever muscle that is. I'm not that knowledgeable where I know all that stuff, okay? But I'm pulling this up and so that my spine is straight. Okay, shoulder blades are down and back, and I'm gonna try to maintain this form for the whole movement. Obviously, I will shift a bit, but the more I can maintain that posture, the easier this is gonna be. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna extend one leg and then extend the other leg. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I bring them out and I bring them in. Outside, inside, inside, outside. Okay, trying to maintain that posture. Okay, and I'm doing this rather slowly. If you do it a little bit more fluid, okay, it's a little bit easier. Okay, and the whole time I'm trying to be as strong and straight as possible. Okay, so that's the hip circle. And then at the end of the hip circle, we're going to get up. This can be very useful for things like wrestle ups. Okay, so I'm going to push my weight forward driving this knee down to the ground and this knee down to the ground. That's what I'm pressing into the mat and I'm gonna come up. Now, as I come up, I wanna make sure at the top that my spine is as straight as I can. Okay, I don't wanna do this, bringing my ribs out, sticking my tailbone out. I don't wanna do this, okay, caving my chest in and rounding my back. Okay, I'm trying to maintain that strong big chest and remain, uh, maintain that spine line. Okay, and then I'm gonna come up. Now as I come up, I'm gonna tuck my hip under. Okay, and that's gonna be what's needed to maintain the line of my spine. Head is up, shoulder blades are down and back. And now as I come back down, I want to rest on the mat. Okay, this is what you're gonna wanna do. Try not to slam on the way back down. That's gonna help all of these little supporting muscles build and build and get stronger and stronger. Now you would go back. Okay, so I'm here, and then I do that hip circle again. One, two, three, four, and then I'm pressing those knees down. Spine is straight, okay, up, and then I tuck my hip under. Anterior pelvic tilt, thrusting forwards. And now as I'm going back, that's coming back out, and I go down slow. Up and down. I'm not sure why, but my hands always want to do this when I do it. You don't have to do this. It just, for some reason, that's what my body does. Like that. Now, once you've mastered this movement, we're going to get take it a step further. We're going to do an octopus walk. This is what an octopus walk looks like. Again, I'm starting in the shin box. And I'm gonna step one leg out. Out, and I plant the heel. Now I'm gonna pull myself up to somewhat of a combat base-like position. I do a, a hamstring curl with that leg and I'm going to pull myself up. Up and now I'm going to continue to go forward. I'm bringing my hips forward over top of my leg and now I'm going to rest this hip down on the mat and bring it into a shin box on the other side. Okay and now as I'm doing this same details apply. I always want that strong straight spine, shoulder blades down and back and head as neutral as possible. Try not to do this okay or this or this, neutral, everything neutral. Out, plant, pull yourself up, and then get in front of the foot and rest your hip down on that side. You'll see this leg will roll over. Okay, so 
as you're coming up, you're in this position, you bring your foot in front, and then as you rest your hip down, this foot will roll over. This motion is very useful, especially once you start understanding leg locks and the ways you can, all the different complicated ways you can use your guard and how you need to get up and get down from there. These movements, you'll see them everywhere. It's like, oh, okay, that's where I do that. Like this happens in like the saddle when you're going in a lot of the time. I'm seeing people like this. I'm like, ah, if you don't understand how to get over that, it's gonna be a problem, right? If I'm in jujitsu, right, and I'm this, my leg is like this, I'm like in this kind of position. The person starts pushing me that way and I don't understand how to move properly, okay, I could blow my MCL right there. <laughs> that sucks. But if I know how to move properly, okay, I can roll over that really easy. Okay, so this octopus walk is very helpful. Out, plant, up, and down, and other side. Out, plant, up, and down. And it looks super weird. <laughs> Another place we can go from this shin box is the pigeon. Most of you have seen pigeons or done them at some point in your life, high school, uh, PE class, or athletic sport. So I'm gonna take my back leg and I'm gonna straighten it out behind me. Like that. I, bat I bring it out and I'm gonna turn the toes towards the ground. And that brings me into a pigeon. Now I can drop down, bring my weight down, get a stretch in that hip, come up, and now I'm gonna bring it back in. And I'm gonna go back to my shin box. Now we go to the other side. I extend that back leg out and over, rolling that hip down. Back leg goes out and over, rolling that hip down. Bring it down, stretch the glute, come back up and back down. We can get back and forth from shin box to shin box with any of these hip circles. Another way we can get side to side, this is another really useful movement to have for strength and stability, like a windshield wiper. I don't have a name for this one. Okay, but I'm gonna start again in the shin box. This time, my shoulders are gonna be like this. Okay, my arms are gonna be like this. I have my thumbs up just for reference, so I don't really want any turning of the thumbs right now. I'm gonna bring my knees up into the other side. I start like this, and now I'm gonna bring both my legs up and bring my arms somewhat together. Really strong, big chest, chin is down, shoulder blades are back. You're gonna wanna do this. Try to stay into this form. Now I open up this arm, bringing me into the shin box on the other side. Together and apart. And together and apart. Very difficult in the middle not to curl your body. You really have to fire your core Stay tall and straight. <sighs> Trying to almost stick your butt out <sighs> and your chest. <sighs> Another extremely useful movement. The next one is called an airplane. We're gonna have to stand up for this. This is, I find it very, very, very uh, helpful, especially now that I'm doing judo and throwing a lot with judo. A lot of judo is done on one leg. So the better balance you have on one leg, the easier it is gonna be for you in multiple different gra grappling exchanges. This is also true for guard passing. I have a guard passing style that I've been uh, working on for the last six months or so. It's called high stepping. Never seen anybody else do it. And a, it really relies on me, to, my ability to be able to balance on one leg. And we'll see that another day, but we're gonna look at this mobility exercise to make sure you never fall down. Now, ideally you do this on like a hard floor, okay, because that way the floor isn't gonna move. I'm on a sprung gym mat, so I'm gonna make it work anyway, but uh, just know that if you have a hard surface under your foot, it's gonna be just a little easier, especially when you're getting started. We wanna make sure that we're aligned correctly. Our shoulders are, are parallel to the ground, our feet are right under our hips, and our hips are, again, parallel to the ground. Any twisting, turning is no good. Now, our core, we wanna inflate our core. So there's two different ways that we can use our core, that, at least to my knowledge, okay? One is to like flex by making like a six pack, right? The other one is to inflate. Think about making like a fat belly, like push everything out, like that. 
and that's going to actually really help you to keep your spine straight. So I want an anterior pelvic tilt. Okay, that's what we were talking about before in the, in the hip circle and get up. We want our hips rotated forward. Okay, we want our shoulder blades back and I'm going to fire that cylinder. Okay, I'm going to make that fat belly. And now from here, arms go out to my sides and I'm going to bring all my weight onto one of my feet like so. Now I need a slight bend in the standing leg and I'm going to move forward as far as I can and back. Now, this seems like a very easy exercise. And it is if we're not hyper aware of all the details. See, I'm getting off balance here. Oh, oh. And that actually is good. Okay, if you start wavering around, just don't put your foot down. Try to maintain your shape until you're stable again. And then again, continue going. Okay, so when I'm doing this, I want to make sure that my leg is going back just as much as my upper body is going forward. I don't want my leg to go back less than my upper body is going forward. That's going to create a break in the hip line. Okay, so I don't, I don't want this to happen at all. That break there, I need that all to stay straight. Okay, I don't want a rotation, at least not until we start talking about how to rotate. I don't want those toes of the free foot to start opening up or start turning down. I want them pointing the same direction as the first foot, as the standing leg. This, these toes are pointing like that. These toes have to point the same exact direction. Going down and bringing it back. Another mistake that a lot of people make when we're doing this, okay, is they'll let that back, that spine line, bend and break. We're not doing this. I'm not bringing my ribs out. Okay, I'm not tilting my tailbone backwards. It's going to be tucked forwards, driving forwards like that, which that action fires our glute. This is actually very helpful once you start learning to teep. You're, I'm in a very similar position as the airplane on my teep. Here's my teep, here's my airplane. Okay, very, very similar. All the weight is on that leg. Anterior pelvic tilt, chest up, shoulder blades down and back. Your arms, just put them wherever you need to in order to balance. Okay, and we're going forward as far as we can, trying to maintain that strong line. Okay, and back. You want to do about 10 in a row without putting your foot down. So keep your foot up off the ground throughout the entire movement. Don't let that happen. Okay, and if you start wavering, waver around. Okay, this is going to build all of those stabilizers and really help you to be more balanced. And then bring it back in and you're good and continue on. And then do 10 on the other leg. Okay, all of these exercises should be done in around sets of 10 to 15. And you could do more if you have that attention span. It's not really going to hurt you. But I would say do at least 10. The next one, I had a coach at one point that was showing me all of this stuff and he really helped me to build my body back because I was just pop, 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 breaking all the time, just tearing all the time. And I didn't really understand how to organize my joints properly, but this guy taught me a lot. Thank you to that coach for teaching me this stuff, but I don't remember what the names are all called. Okay, or your name, horrible. I'm gonna start with my hips rotated outwards for this and I'm gonna maintain a strong strong spinal position, and I'm going to do a squat. Now, when you do a squat, a lot of people want to squat like this. Don't bring your neck up and jack your neck like that. Try to keep the line of your neck also very neutral. Okay, and forgive me if my, my form isn't perfect on this. I stopped doing these a long time ago. I don't have the time I used to. But we're going to drop down like that. We're going to squat like that, down as far as you can. Now, you're going to rotate all your joints and bring this knee down. We're rotating everything this way, knee goes down. Now I'm gonna use that rolling through motion I was talking about earlier with this foot, pointing it and rolling over, bringing it down to a hip. And now I'm coming back up, boom. I bring that leg back out into that external uh, rotated position and now I bring my knee up off the ground, stand back up and then back down again, down. I roll this across 
and down. I roll the foot under to the hip. I bring it back up and I unroll and up and down and over. So you can kind of go back and forth here, staying down as well. But all of these you can kind of connect together. Well, except for the airplane, because this kind of position can become a shin box really easily. As soon as this hip goes down, this leg goes back, boom, I'm in the shin box. Okay, and plant and up and down and over and shin box, right? So we can kind of do a little bit of everything. And if you understand how these things kind of work together, it's very much like the, the, the puzzle pieces of jiu-jitsu fit together. Okay, and you'll be able to combine them in your own unique ways. Okay, so take these building blocks, rep them separately, and then you can start combining them into your own little movement patterns that will hugely benefit you when you were, when you were using your martial arts practice, okay, when you are practicing jiu-jitsu. Okay? Hope that helps guys. If you have any other issues that you're trying to solve mobility wise, like say you're having issues because you're a boxer, right? If you're like this all the time. Let me know. Uh, if you have any, anything else, put it in the comments. Okay, we always want those questions. Thank you guys. Peace out.